radar data at first study by our investigators indicates the aircraft converging with the 727 apparently overtaking the Cessna from the rear. The Cessna was going up, the jet coming down and overtaking it. Somewhere north of Balboa Park at about 3,500 feet, they collided. The Cessna was demolished, the jet's right wing was crippled. I have an unidentified target at two o'clock at unknown altitude. He is in our airspace, but has not made contact. We have no visual contact with any other aircraft. One minute and five seconds before collision, Lindbergh warned PSA of a Cessna ahead one mile. PSA's response shows confusion. We had him a minute ago. I think he passed off our right. Then disaster struck. And the plane started heading right towards us, and um, all five of us were really scared that it might, you know, hit us. Even a month later, with a look at this neighborhood, it's easy to tell that something devastating happened here. The plane parts are gone. Most of the debris from shattered homes has been removed. The police and firemen and their vehicles have left. But the sensation of tragedy lingers. The curious, the sightseers, drive through in cars or stroll the sidewalks at the site of the nation's worst air disaster. A disaster which, in a matter of seconds, meant death for 144 people. There were no survivors from either aircraft, and seven people were killed on the ground. More than 200 friends and relatives of PSA pilot Jim McFerrin gathered. The pastor of McFerrin's church offered words of sympathy and remembrance for the 42-year-old pilot. He loved the sky, he loved to be outdoors, and that's the reason we're meeting out here, because his family knew that he was an outdoorsman, and he loved to be in the things that God made outside.